What is up, Tommy? What is up? How are you? Good on you. So good to see you, man. Oh, so good. It's so good to see you. What's crack lacking? There's such a long history, but I was just, I've just been so nervous. I don't know what it is. I think it's just because it's been such a long time since. We really like sat down and chatted. What's the whole, how does the whole COVID thing feel in South Africa? Like what's the vibe? It's a different feel in the air. Everyone's kind of more relaxed, happier, uh, less stressed out. And it's obviously because they relaxed the alcohol and tobacco ban, which was... Oh, they did? Uh, That's freaking hysterical. I know, it's just the craziest thing. But then people went so buck wild. Oh, they did? So everyone has, like, mad alcohol poisoning the day after? <laughs> like, 800 people arrested. It was just chaos. People yeah, just, it, was. it was like COVID happened, and then it was almost like the alcohol lifting, the ban of the alcohol lift, of the al- alcohol ban and smoking ban was like, you would think that it's, they found the, the vaccine for COVID, and that's... Wow. Now we're... Now that Everyone, good, everyone's good. going back wild. Craziest thing, so... That's crazy, man. But it, it's, been a, it's been a crazy time. It's been a... Obviously, I've worked, because I'm in radio, and been working with, like, uh, some really cool campaigns. Um, it's just tragic to see the number of people in South Africa that are basically starving. Right. Um, yeah. So it was. We did a campaign that was really powerful, where we were just fresh. Was just basically giving out vouchers to people that needed food. You know what I mean? The basic. Wow, food. that's amazing. And we ran it for about over two months, and every day the stories we got was crazy. So I think it it was an eye opening experience for the government, um, for the presidents, and also for a lot of people to. But isn't that what COVID did? It kind of got everyone to take stock of life and appreciate like the literally the smallest things. I mean, going to the restaurant seemed like such a basic and trivial thing. And then you realize it's a luxury. So totally. Yeah. And so, what's it been like there? Cause I, I know like it's been I'm watching a lot of like Joe Rogan stuff as well lately. And uh, he's, cause they've been touching on a lot of kind of like the vibe in New York and California. Yeah. How things have been like, it's so weird to be, to have California being quiet and empty streets and stuff. So how's it Yeah, been? I mean, it's been, uh, I feel like California and uh, kind of the more democratic states, if I could say, have been a little bit more responsible and a little bit more empathetic um, and caring towards and considerate of what the virus could potentially do, yeah. you know, but then you've got like the whole of, the middle Bible belt redneck America that's just like like this it's not even it's not even real you know and they're running around with no masks and just like spreading the virus like a bunch of crazy people so it's uh it's definitely an interesting setup Uh, America has its problems just as South Africa does you know in different ways and I guess it's always amplified in the states because the media is like so quick to kind of jump on anything that could Kind of make it look like the government isn't really doing certain things or, and we all know how people feel about the administration. So it's been a crazy time. So yeah, it's been, I'm sure it's been quite a treat, but you've been nestled away quite nicely. You're working on a lot of cool projects. You've been quite busy. Oh yeah. It's, it's actually, I've really enjoyed this time. Um, taking something really negative and it, turning it into something really positive because there's been a lot of projects that I've had on the back burner because I've been working on everybody else's albums. And so like, for example, which we'll get to, but like the pigs record, I've been working on that for like three years in between producing other bands albums, you know? So these past five months, I've just been able to completely focus on, on this project and actually it's let see it come to fruition which is amazing that's so rad man yeah it's been it's been an inspiring journey like just to take it back um from where it all started this journey not even just for you but just okay for you it started in ballet class when your ballet teacher (laughs) you're 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 not as graceful (laughs) as you think she is you know something could work better for her 
Um, so for you, it's been quite an interesting journey and we're going to get to that from how you got to where you are now, especially in, in Cali and the States. Um, but for me, our journey started, what is it, probably like 2006, 2007, I think. When yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, a friend of mine and uh, we used to basically stalk you guys, stalk the band. <laughs> That's not true. I loved you guys. We we became good friends. Yeah, maybe we, a bit stalkerish in the beginning, but but yeah. it, it <laughs> really? blossomed into a great friendship. <laughs> yeah. It really got stalkerish. I mean, I remember we would. She would tell me, uh, Shane Jacobs. Yeah. She would tell me like, listen, you're in Durban this weekend. Sj and the band are in Durban. Go check them out. And <laughs> my dad, I'd leave like I've I left family functions to be like, hey, dad, I need to go and. I think it so was great. Walton's Wharf at Zach's and I came out there and checked you guys. So oh, wow. that's pretty I'm much an honor. Yeah. So it's really been like such a cool journey to watch you to grow. I mean, from the Stealing Love Jones days. So, I mean, that was, yeah. So maybe you can touch a bit on your journey and uh, your, basically your journey in music officially started after high school when you worked at, uh, when you interned at Northwind Studios, I believe. That's kind of when it all kind of kicked. Yeah, up. I mean, I mean, I've been playing in bands um, pretty much my whole life since I was about twelve years old. Um, I've been fronting bands, so uh, straight out of high school, got into a second engineering at Northwind Recording, and then obviously Stealing Love Jones happened. Um, just bef just before Stealing Love Jones, I was doing a solo project. It was a Christian uh, project called SJ and um, that obviously fell to the side pretty fast <laughs> but uh, Stealing Love Jones uh, it, it kind of it, 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 it was it was a it was like a snowball it happened so much faster than I think anybody expected the band just kind of blew up um, and so obviously we just started touring South Africa and we had to learn a lot really fast. We got to open for some incredible artists like Fall Out Boy, See The, Jimmy Eat World, you know, was just these like unheard of opportunities, you know, given to us, which was, which was amazing. And, and then I guess, I guess I've always been fairly ambitious and driven. Um, and I've had my eyes set on the States since I was a kid, you know, cause I was like, man, like American bands are where it's at. <laughs> like the American music industry is where it's at. The American entertainment industry is where it's at, you know? So, um, kind of just put every cent that I had into investing into bringing the band uh, on a, a tour over here. Uh, and that failed horribly, you know? So I think that was like 2009, um, and we had we had that three month tour that I think I think we grew a lot as humans at that point just because you know we were young kids who we were so full of ourselves we had delusions of grandeur and we came over to the states and everybody was better than us. <laughs> um, it, it was it was a hard lesson to learn and I mean we didn't even end up finishing the tour because the band had basically like had a straight out brawl you know we as we ended up just flying home early and disbanding the band and just being like well if you if you find done yeah. um and i think after that i mean that was really that was a significant moment in my life because i was just i was like it was tragic yeah. you know everything that we'd worked so hard just fell apart in in like two months um and I mean, I was probably bedridden for three months after that, just so depressed, just feeling sorry for myself, you know. And then one day I just just woke up and I was like, like, stuff it. I'm going to go back to the States and and I'm going to start from from the bottom and work my way up. And literally, that's what what I did. I flew into San Diego. Uh, I had a friend there and I crashed on her couch. And I started playing cover songs in, in bars five nights a week. 
and just meeting people and crashing on their couches and then playing at strip clubs and then playing at like r random restaurants and then doing corporate events, you know? So I basically went from being what I thought was a massive rock star in South Africa being flown around in helicopters <laughs> to an absolute no one sleeping on couches, singing cover songs for $50 a night. Shut. It's, it's so crazy because I think I even remember that tour. I think we, I did an interview with the guys back at UJFM. Um, around that, or it might have just been a conversation because obviously you guys would not have been in the same room straight after that tour. Um, and I remember you guys you saying it was just such a brutal tour. I mean, from like cleaning up and showering at like, um at trucking stations and, and stuff like totally. that sleeping in like what it, wherever you could find a place to sleep i mean that's not and like you say i'm not surprised it's like such a brutal thing to deal with mentally let alone to deal with as a band um who there's always going to be tensions i mean you guys spend so much time together and then totally. but in a way i think that kind of brutality would have prepared you for moving to the states i mean you probably would have been a little bit more depressed if you had decided to leave the band in SA, move to the States, and now you're playing in strip clubs and now you're like playing for $50, cruising around. Like, it probably seemed a little easier than the previous time you were. Uh -huh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think I'm pretty resilient, you know? So I think it also... Uh, it also brought up, up, up personality differences in the band. Like I'm, I'm still at this point, like, let me tell you that I do not have my bum in the butter. I'm still freaking out here hustling 16 to 18 hours a day. Um, yes, I have a beautiful home, a roof over my head. Uh, I mean, I... Hard for, and we're going to touch on that. You really... Yeah. You are the prime example. The, the, What's so profound is that even now after this long it's, it's not all about let me relax now i've made it no no i i mean there's there's no way that i've made it at at all i mean i i have a full attitude of gratitude i have i have accomplished more than i feel the majority of of people in my position have in their their lives but it's it's in no way uh, is it translating into my bank account, you know? So it's like, it's continually always a hassle. And I just, I feel very grateful that I'm able to make enough to, to continue to make, to do music. And I think just the resilience and, and how many people say no, you know, and then I just keep knocking on those doors and sending those emails and, and, and reinventing yourself the, the entire time, putting yourself in rooms with different people, putting yourself in front of people, you know, it's the hassle never, ever stops. I mean, like I'm nearly 40. It's crazy, you know, and it's, and it's like, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I feel, and there's also something, something set apart with South Africans, like, I feel like South Africans have a hustle in them that I don't see in in any other culture. Like, I mean, sure, the Americans hustle. I just, I feel like there's a difference in resilience, what we're willing to do. Man, I honestly, I would rather sleep on the floor and or in a car than than give up what I'm doing. You know, it would it would break me to have to go to have a job outside of this. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to continue on in life. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think it's it's kind of you got to make your your choices. Like how how far are you willing to go? You know. And I think that's you know starting again at 27 years old, 10 years ago in America was just kind of like being a 17 year old kid in South Africa coming straight out of school and like starting all over. So I've I've had one start and then I got another start which is cool um but it hasn't been easy but I'm very grateful very grateful that's amazing yeah the gratitude part is that's something I've realized we need to practice more of as people is gratitude and something that's crept up a lot is people advising others to keep gratitude journals especially during like this period mm -hmm. of because it's so hard for people to generally find things to be grateful for mm -hmm. so 
I think that's it's such a powerful mindset and that's what's going to keep you. I mean, that's why 37 is nothing. You're just, you know, you're, that's the thing. People hustle and people work hard for years and for decades. We just don't see the hard work, you know, and right. um, that's one of the things that I found is that everyone talks about the success story. They never talk about what you went through to get to that. Yeah. Point, you know what I mean? And it's never yeah. really finished. And I think that's what's so important in that mindset of, and you learned. You, you, in totally. the, touring the States, you kind of realized I was the band in SA, like top of the charts everywhere. And then I moved to the States and no one really knows who I am. And you got to start again. And it's, it's, I think, very, it's very humbling and it uh, makes you realize how in insignificant you are in the grand scheme of things, you know? And I think during this, these times, uh, these COVID times and uh, this lockdown, like I've, I think a lot of people have had a big shift in what they find is important to them. And I know for myself, I've had a massive shift in, I just, I no longer, I mean, I kind of, I'm just doing this project because I love it and I think it's really rad, but mm -hmm. I'm not looking for accolades for it. Like I just, I don't care. I'm happy to like, hang at home with my chickens and just make music. It's like the, the, I guess the status of what we strive for as society is just, I don't know. I just think it's so unimportant. I'm just like, I don't care. It's where that's, and that's been a recent shift for me, you know, and because my whole life I've been like, I want to be rich and famous in some way, somehow let's figure it out. And I'm just like, how dumb is that? Like I could die tomorrow and like what do i have you know i think the most important things is is have you do you have people in your life that you have treated well yeah. um do you have somebody in your partner husband wife you know that that you have honored and respected and cherished you know it's like there's just all these little things have started to sneak up and up on me and maybe it's it's come with age <laughs> <laughs> but but i don't know it just seems unimportant you know i'm kind of happy to just just chill and make music and if something happens it happens and I'm, and it's great to be able to pay the bills and responsibility is important you know you don't want to be a loser in society that's not rad yeah but but it's just fame and fortune just seems silly in the state of the world right because you'll never be the most famous person isn't that what the mistake is that everyone's always trying to chase the next level of either fame or fortune or power. I mean, you get to a certain stage and then you realize compared to the next tier, you're at the bottom. So let me, and you just keep running this race. You keep fighting and you're, you spend 50, 60 years of your life fighting to get to the top. And it never ends because there's always someone more powerful, there's someone more famous or someone richer or whatever it might be. Early. That's, and I think that's one of the most, I think for a lot of people, uh, it was a very humbling thing with the lockdown is that they started to think like, okay, hold on. I actually can't, my status as, for instance, an accountant or lawyer, I can't really do much right now. Like, um, and it was also a time for creative people to kind of get a bit more respect in that sense. Like, what we do is important, you know what I mean? We create stuff that kept people occupied. And there was a meme going around about, hopefully when all of this is over, people will start remembering that it was the arts that kept people going when we were trapped in our homes, you know? And we right. the importance of having a good family life or a good home and not kind of hiding away from life because that's what a lot of people do. I mean, we've all been there of using work as a kind of means to distract us from from life or dealing with whatever's happening. Totally. And one of the really interesting things that you said was, well, interesting for me is because I'm always caught in the sh on the fence with this is knocking on those doors. You know, you said, keep hustling, sending emails and like constantly pushing to get to yeah. um, break down that door. Do you find that that sort of attitude has worked well? Do people eventually say, you know what? let me just see what she what she has to offer let me just find out why she's pushing me so much or do you find that um you know what i keep getting rejected let me just stop 
if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. What what's the your attitude towards that? What do you what do you find has worked? I think I think the accent helps a lot. <laughs> right. Really Seriously, do you know it blows my mind when I I meet South. I, I mean, people say that my my accent is pretty diluted now, but but it hasn't been on purpose because I've found um, that my accent has opened doors to people wanting to have a conversation with me. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's so crazy to me when I, I meet a South African and they sound like a full freaking American. I'm like, why? <laughs> like, you just lost your freaking, like, th that was your ace of your sleeve, man. You just, like, lost it. So, um, I think, I mean, I mean, again, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty resilient uh, and ambitious. So, and, and, you know, it is a man's world. Um, honestly, it, it really is. And men would much rather sign a guy than a woman that's or work with a guy than a woman. That's, that's been my, um, experience, but I just keep going back and being like, like, Hey, this is, this is what I got. And then I take that constructive criticism and I throw another thing at it. I don't get personal about it. It's business, you know, and it's hard in arts, especially not to be personal uh, to take critique on your production or your songwriting personal because it, it is personal. But if you want to, if you want to, this to be your business, you have to kind of separate yourself from it. So I think I, I've, the greatest lesson I've learned is being able to take criticism, not take it personally, uh, to adapt, um, you know, I think all of these things have been, and that's again, knocking on doors and just like, you will listen to me. And you know, eventually, the, I mean, nine times out of 10, I think, I think it has a lot to do with, with personality and, and some people are going to really like you and some people are just not going to like you. And it has nothing to do with anything other than just, I guess, human chemicals. That's exactly, um, it's, I said that to someone so, who sorry yeah i was just saying to someone that some people will just dislike you for the sake they just dislike you there's no reason it's they either like you or they don't and and you can't explain it and that's yeah it's just what it is what it is it's just how it is i mean you take the nicest people in the world i mean you take whoever it might be and you think how could anyone ever hate this person but somewhere out there there is a person yeah i mean nine times out of ten I would say that the majority of people that I'm pretty, uh, I've been aggressively pursuing have become really good friends, you know? So, um, yeah. That's amazing. Um, that's really cool to know. And you've worked with some pretty incredible, like musicians and artists since you've been up there. I mean, you've, uh, obviously we'll chat about like the Great A's album, um, but often, a band I generally see on your stories, like Alien and Farm, I've seen uh, stuff with them. And then, is it Pigs or We Are Pigs? I always, always get confused. It's, you know, I'm confused too. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Pigs, just for short, but there's another band called Pigs, so I just put We Are Pigs in front of it, just to, um, just, just for copyright um, purposes. Yeah. Um, so I just call it pigs, but it's, it's, we are pigs. Um, yeah. I mean, and other people are like William Corgan, uh, Brad, yeah, uh Billy. yeah, so like that's ugh, good old Billy. So tell me some stories about Billy actually, if you can. I don't, I don't have too many stories actually. I met, uh, I met, so it, it all comes back to South African stealing love Jones which um, which is has just been um yeah i mean the, the band just keeps and south africa just keeps giving you know it's the gift that keeps giving so um jason who was the guitar player in stealing love jones he was in a band called ketamine i don't know if you remember ketamine they were super dope yeah, yeah. so so ketamine had won some smashing pumpkins uh cover competition and they were flown out to chicago 
uh, to play in this pumpkins competition where they met Bjorn Thorsred, who ended up, who, who's the engineer and producer from, from the pumpkins, who ended up producing our record and engineering our record. So it was all through Jason, this, uh, this connection. Uh, and and uh, we flew down the line, we flew Bjorn out and he came and worked, uh, worked on, on the, the Bleed to Bloom record uh, with us at Face, Face Studios in Westville. And uh, we, I've just kept in touch with Bjorn over the years. You know, I, I lived with him for a little while in Chicago. Um, and I met Billy through him. And the first night, or it might've been the second time I met him, I can't really remember, but we went to, uh, Billy has a wrestling federation. I don't know if you know this. I had no idea. It's, it's National Wrestling Association, I think. It's NWA. But uh, we were invited as his guests um, to come and watch the the wrestling federation. So that was the first time. And I've, we've kind of, I haven't kept in touch with Billy, but Bjorn and I keep in touch. And, and when I proposed this collaboration to Bjorn, he was like, he was like, well, I'll send it over and, and see what happens. And never in my wildest dream. I mean, Bjorn, Bjorn was just like, don't expect anything. Like, you know, he gets requests like this all the time. So I was, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even think it was, was a thing. And, and he hit Bjorn back and he was like, I love this. Like, I'm going to jump on it straight away. And like, it, it, it's just insane. Like, I'm just like, how is this even real life? You know, it's freaking Billy Colgan Billy from Colgan. the Smashing Pumpkins giving me a thumbs up. And he's like, I like it so much. Here's like, let's co-write this and let's, let's, let's tweak this so that I can be better. And I'm just like, like, whatever you want to do. Yes. Like, yes, because you are the God of songwriting, you know? So, so it's, it's a very humbling, it's really nice because to get a nod of approval from somebody that, that has, is probably one of the greatest front men, songwriters, singers of all time. You know, it's, it just, it means a lot. And, and I'm a nobody. I'm just a little nobody from South Africa. That's just tried hard and continuing to try hard. Am I the greatest singer on earth? Absolutely not. Very far from it. Am I the greatest guitar player? Absolutely not. Very far from it. You know, am I the greatest songwriter? Absolutely not. But, but there's just, again, just being consistent and, and passionate. pushing uh, and passionate. And I don't know, maybe I, I don't come across annoying and people are, people are, are into helping. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm very blessed. And, and same with, same with Ted from Corn. Like, um, I met him through the Grey Days project, which is the project that Chester Bennington was working on just before he passed. Yeah. Um, and again, the fact that I am anywhere near projects of this grandeur and caliber is just, I get very emotional every time I, I talk about this because it's just, again, like I'm an absolute no one in the world of music. And for the Grey Days guys, Sean Dowdell, who was Chester's business partner, for him to open his arms to a complete stranger, a woman, yeah. you know, and say, we're going to trust you with these songs because they heard the Alien Ant Farm stuff that I'd done. Um, and I even got a little tattoo oh, because I, like I love my voice. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> oh, love it. Um, we hear a few you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, for them to, for, for them to open their, their arms and, and trust me with such a huge responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously the, the people that were coming in and, and playing on the record, like Head and Monkey and Chris Trainer from Bush, um, Paige oh. Hamilton from Helmet, they've got Marcos from POD, uh, yeah. Ryan Shuck from OG. Uh, it's, right. it's, been, it's really cool, you know, so all of these wonderful people I've had an opportunity to meet through Chester, who I, I never got to meet 
um, it's, it's just, it's unfathomable, you know, that so much blessing can come through such a tragic event. It's, you know, like hearing the story alone makes me emotional. Like anyone that knows me um, knows how deeply, and it's probably not, it's not even just me. It's like a lot of people. Linkin Park was one of those bands that brought so many people together. Linkin Park, I first heard something somewhere where, somewhere I belong uh, when I was in grade 11. So, um, and that was really like my first introduction to rock music and alternative music. And that album, Meteora, pretty much brought together people from all races, all walks of life. And right. it had such a strong influential footprint in South Africa. And then obviously people went back and traced backwards from Meteora because it had so much commercial success in South Africa on radio. Uh, obviously Dude, I, have, I have goosebumps right now, like just talking about this with you because that was the thing. I did this interview with Dave Navarro oh. and he was like, he was like, SJ, have like, have you met met Chester, and, and how did this come a, come a, about? And and I was just like, tragically, I have never met Chester, but I feel like it, Chester made us feel. Jesus. I'm getting yeah. evil. <laughs> Dude, so it's but that's the thing. That's the attachment we have to this, and I literally I remember. Oh, the- he made us. He made us feel like we knew him, you know, through his songs. Like, I, f- I feel like I knew him. So, so creating those songs with the band was just, like, unreal. Yeah, and I think one of the things that really hit me, and uh, well, I'll, I'll obviously put links up to the videos and whatever kind of content that I'm referencing or that we talk about. Mm-hmm. But the one video that really got me was, I uh, can't remember his name right now, but you were working with a producer in a completely different time zone. And it was probably like 3.30 a.m. for you and you guys were on a call working on one of the tracks. Right. And you were asking him, or he asked you about, or you said to him, did you hear that when Chester, between takes, was busy like just mouthing stuff to the engineers. And you said, to, you said then and there yourself, like I just got goosebumps from that. I obviously watched them in in South Africa and they were absolutely phenomenal. But to know that you worked on that Great A's album and you were literally working with material recorded by an icon, like a a musical legend for so many reasons. And that was unreal. It was so crazy for Neil because getting, when I received that Pro Tools session Mm. um, and I mean, just isolating his vocal that, I mean, that's a 19 year old Chester. And then before I I basically stripped off all of the music Mm -hmm. and just took the vocals and then, then just listened to the lyrics and his melody for about 300 hours straight. So I was kind of in this like Chester trance, you know, just, just letting, letting the being flow, flow through. Yeah. me I guess for a lack of a better term and and hoping that that we had taken this in the right direction you know basing it very the production heavily on what the lyric content was and I mean this guy was just so far beyond his years I mean that uh, a 19 year old voice I think those reels were recorded between when he was 17 and 19 and right? man and that it's incredible it's such a great story to hear I mean I can read about it and I can see the album and I've listened to the album and um, it, it cuts, it cuts deep. And, but you had the privilege of working. So you know, some of the tracks that you got to work on and produce, I mean, you said there were a few of them, um, but maybe people can check out so they kind of get a feel for the stuff you worked on. Yeah, for sure. So um, one of my favorites, I think that I, I got to work on is a song called She Shines. Um, we, we produced and wrote that one with, um, Head from Corn and Jason from Breaking Benjamin. Um, so it's, it's a little heavier, a little grittier, but it, it just, it felt so good. Um, Soul Song was amazing. Chester's son, Jamie, sang backing vocals on that track. So it was just like, 
I th the crazy thing is, is that now that I feel a little bit more separated from it, I'm just, I'm so much more emotional about it. You know, while we were, were in it, it was just, we were so, I was so in it with my partner that it, it was, it was hard to, to feel all the emotions, I guess. And then now that, that I've been able to, it's been a, a good couple of months, you know, when I listen back, I'm just like, ah, oh, this is gorgeous. No. Um, the syndrome is the syndrome is another track um, I produce with my partner Lucas, and you you mentioned him in the video. Um, Lucas is in France, and and him and I do the majority of our work together. Um, and what else is is there on there? Oh, just like heroin. Um, yeah, 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 that's what's up. Produce produced that one with Chris Trainer from Bush. Uh, you just threw super, 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 super cool, super cool track because it's it had this. If um, the song itself, just like heroin, didn't actually have a chorus. If you listen to the, and I think you can find it on YouTube, the original, original, just like heroin. If you look up just like heroin, gray days. And if you listen to it, the song kind of didn't have a form to it. And just gray days in the band being so open to us um, Altering. creating Altering. something different up on it. You know, we basically took Chester's vocal, moved it around, um, and did a, did a little bit of polishing and trickery and, and created this, this monster. And that song felt so nineties and gritty to me yeah. that I wanted, I wanted to get like a, that cool garbagey esky feel to it. And it, it's, it's so great. So great. It turned out well. Oh, and then more sky was the, the last one. So, so Lucas and I produced five on, uh, on the record which which in itself is just mind-blowing i mean th those reels were given to some of the biggest producers in rock and the band chose our versions you know so it's just it's just such a wonderful nod i think also playing in a band and loving being a metalhead and and um have i lost you there uh yeah. oh you're there yeah. okay did you did you hear me or no uh no i just want to see uh sorry just give me two seconds i i know I, I missed you on that uh, okay i'll re-say that i think i think playing in a had in, in that um really gave us kind of an edge to the productions, you know, I felt, I felt like I really could connect and understand what Chester was feeling at that time. You know, it's because we were kids sitting in a garage writing songs too. Yeah, so, yeah. and now being able to put in um, everything that I've learned over the years um, being able to 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 draw from that and and execute the song in a way to make it a massive song but still keep its integrity um uh, yeah i mean it's it's super cool i i often think if only if only i knew what i knew now when i was doing stealing love jones songs like we want to be the biggest band in the world man <laughs> but you like you you like this i mean it's always been a passion of yours, right? To kind of like be the person behind the scenes working on, I mean, obviously being on stage is like a rush. You probably, it's inexplicable. You can't explain it to someone and it'll always be a rush. But I think like for me doing like what you're doing now, it's, it's not easy, but it's also, you feel more comfortable trying to create like a legacy because you have more time and the focus is less on you at all times to be on mm -hmm. top of your game, like constantly. I mean, you can have a day off on stage and it could be the, the one performance that someone remembers you for. Um, totally. But in the background, you can completely always like submerge yourself, learn something new. And I think that's what's really important. And that's what you've totally. really, totally. you really come um, and really done 
I think since you moved to the States and it's, it's never an easy move. And you've kind of like, you fitted, you found your kind of way of making things work and used what you had to your advantage. And I think that's, it's such an amazing thing. I mean, I mean, yeah, you're saying like names like bands like Bush and Smashing Pumpkins, <laughs> and Great Days, and Crazy right? and, and Farm, and it, it's just like it's unreal. It's... I mean, one of the coolest things that I actually um, I had a little note here that I wanted to uh, to mention. Oh yeah, one of the coolest things. Um, and this was probably about eight or 10 years ago is that I was, I was in a session with Akon. Um, and, and he, we were working with Jeffree Star. Um, and he, he said he taught himself how to produce by mimicking and imitating other songs, like basically taking a song and seeing if you could replicate exactly sonically that sound, you know? So you figure out where everything is in that 360 sphere sonic space, finding that tonality, what, what sample, why does the kick sound like that? What's since being used, you know? And I think that was probably one of the greatest pieces of advice that I've ever been given because nobody has an excuse. If you've got a, a DAW, Logic, Pro Tools, whatever it is, there's no excuse for you not to drag your favorite songs in there and see if you can replicate, replicate the sound sonically. And, and that's basically how, how I got into production, you know, out of frustration of working with other, art, with other producers who didn't work at my pace or move at my pace um, or just never, ever got a song done. I was just like, okay, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to figure out how to do this myself. And, and um, grateful to Akon for those wise words, because it's basically just picking apart, being able to hear everything individually, picking it apart and, and finding it. And again, being adaptable, you know, being able to, to create a metal song or create a pop track. And obviously people have their lanes and it's always better to be a master of one than a jack of all trades. But I think it's good uh, to be able to cater to whatever um, is being thrown at you. Absolutely. I mean, being able to adapt is what allows you to kind of like work outside, not only your comfort zone, which is where you go, um, but also mm -hmm. just to, it allows you to play in different spaces and kind of interact with different people. I mean, you wouldn't, if you had just stuck to, I mean, we know your rock roots and your metal roots. I mean, you would never have been open-minded about sitting down or being in studio with Akon because you'd be like, and generally, let's be honest, like rock fans are generally quite rockist. The word rockist when it's like, I love rock. <laughs> never heard that. Really awesome. <laughs> Whatever you listen to, pop is shit. I hate top 40. You know what I mean? Yeah. It takes something really special to kind of, uh adapt to that and that's what's allowed you i mean like with your newest projects i mean you're fusing a lot of hip-hop with with the metal stuff and i think that's really such a powerful thing and that's basically the project you're working on now which is uh the pigs project right i i, I can't wait for you to hear this track that that uh i'm doing with head you're literally gonna shit yourself really it's like it's, sorry excuse my language on no, us it's, but it's it's, it's, fine. it's yeah. It's so ridiculous. Um, he sent me his his vocals like two days ago, mm. and I I was so excited. I literally woke up at like four o'clock in the morning and started like getting into them and adding them to the track. So um, that's most probably going to be the next pig single. And I'm such a huge fan of Brian. He's such a wonderful, kind, empathetic, sensitive, beautiful man. Um, and the fact that he even gave me the time of day, he's a busy, busy dude. Yeah, he's got, besides being the guitar player of Korn, he has like freaking, he does all sorts of amazing work, um, you know, positive, positive stuff, helping people. And he has a couple of spas, you know, and, and he, he was just like, oh my gosh, it's such an honor for me to, to be on this track with you. You know, and I'm like, this is so crazy. This is unreal. So, oh yeah, it, it really is unreal. I'm, I'm very, very blessed. And um, uh, I'm also doing a track with P.O.D. 
who who peyote is one of my you know growing up in the church uh before before i before i saw the light and stepped away from the church um pod was kind of the the only thing i listened to you know that was my roots and foundation because i wasn't allowed to listen to anything else um being in the church so uh, that that's been amazing so sunny sunny and marco so are, are jumping on the track and i'm just busy mixing um uh finishing up a track now with crazy town no. which uh which he's gonna be which he's going to be releasing as his next single. So it's a, it's a very, very, very exciting track. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear it because you're going to lose your mind. Oh man, this is such an exciting time. I mean, it couldn't be, it really has been like a really good period, man, for creative yeah. stuff. And that's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's crazy that, that it's, it feels it feels weird because the world is really suffering right now and there's just so much uh there's just so much confusion and so much um weirdness, you know you can say that like weirdness and and people are financially just business so there's just there's so much negativity but but somehow during this time there's so much positivity has for a lot of people i know uh there's been a lot of positivity if you've been able to figure out how to navigate the the weirdness yeah absolutely it, which is actually something that i'm really interested in is so looking like staying creative doing what you do um do you find that you can sometimes it it kind of gets the line just kind of gets blurry because you're always you're working with so many different sounds and it's easy to kind of forge something that let me let me start that again I'm trying to get it in my head when you forge a pattern of creating music do you find that you sometimes need to take a step back to kind of recreate again so that you don't get stuck in like a particular format or you get lost so like what do you do to kind of stay creatively sharp in that sense um yeah, absolutely. I mean, I take a lot of breaks away from music. Mm. Um, I think, I think that is really maybe when I was younger, I would be able to just like music twenty four hours a day. But honestly, I get really sick of it. Yeah. Um, and it's one of one of the the arguments that that my girlfriend and I have <laughs> are that I don't like listening to music in the car because it's 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 my one space of like quiet, you know, and then everyone's like, we want to listen to music in the car. And I'm just like this grumpy old lady. That's like, it's too loud. It's too loud. It's so annoying. Um, so, so I think a lot of ear rest. I like to, I like to try and do as much because my entire life is consumed with music, with music and the entertainment industry. And I don't always think that it's incredibly healthy. I think the music business is pretty toxic. Um, I think it's really good to find things that, that you can, that you can do. Like, I mean, I don't meditate at all. It doesn't work for me. I know it works for a lot of people, but for lack of a better word, you know, chickens have become my, meditative process i wake up at now 5 30 every morning with the sun and i make a cup of coffee and i go out and i sit in the coop for like half an hour and just like chat to them and just have this piece of time without my phone um i think separating yourself from social media and your phone and your computer um, I don't think we realize the effect that staring at screens all day have on our eyes and, and mental states. Yeah. And I think kind of just putting your phone in another room, uh, just disconnecting for a little while. Those are, those are what I find uh, really helps. You know, if I live closer to, to the ocean, I would be surfing at every opportunity that I could get. Um, mm. But, but yeah, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, a really an exercise person, you know, it's like, I, I like to, to 
trying to stay fit and healthy, but it's like dragging my nails down a chalkboard to actually <laughs> yeah. work out. It's just, I guess I'm, I'm lucky. Um, but cooking is another thing. I think mm -hmm. it's really nice. It's creative. Um, and I, I think that that's something that can, can maybe spice up and change change what's going on from music creative to to Looking food creative Looking. painting you know I, I don't paint but i know a lot of of songwriters and musicians who do so mm. i think it's just finding something to separate to to switch it up that that change is important for sure no i can imagine and i think like a routine, finding the right routine is such an important thing. And I used to, I get bored very easily. So I used to always kind of, every week would be something different. I'd get into a routine and then I'd be like, no, I'm getting bored of this. Let me do something else. And then as I've gotten older, I've realized that routine is so important because there's so much changing around us daily that you need some consistency. You need like a few constants throughout your day. And those totally. mornings, like you say, are, are so important. I know like, um, my wife struggles to sleep, so she often sleeps in a bit later than me. So that morning period, if I can wake up at my five thirty, six o'clock consistently, sitting in the lounge having a cup of coffee is literally like the you know like where your my mind is pretty much at ease, and that's actually where a lot of my curiosity stems from, especially with this with this like this podcast series, for instance. So it's the coffee and socks sessions. The first thing I do when I wake up. I literally put socks on. I always walk around with socks. I make coffee. <laughs> I chill in the lounge, literally. And sometimes I'll listen to music. And if I do, it'll be like something I don't listen to all the time. So it'll be like more my, my jazz stuff, um, the mind stimulating stuff. So more classical yeah. stuff. And that time's so important and having a space to do that, which leads me to this, uh, this new thing that you have with your, your chickens. And Life from the coop. these are, are these, the coop. from the coop. So are these, are, is this your spirit animal? Are chickens your spirit animal? Yeah, man, they're just so sweet. I, uh, I didn't ever expect to have chickens. Um, I was uh, coming back to the Grey Days project, the guitar player, Kristen, he's just a super talented songwriter guitar player incredible songwriter and and after the gray days project he asked me to help him uh with his his record which comes out on the 7th of september it's called enemy airwave it's it's amazing um so i was in arizona working on on his his ep and I wake up in the morning, I'm staying in his house, I walk down the stairs and there's a sign on the door that says, beware of chickens. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like, so weird. So I'm just like, I ignore it. And I'm like, okay, weird, this is odd. So anyway, they're, they're night owls and I'm not really. So they had they'd taken their dog for a walk at like 3 a.m. in the morning mm. and, uh, and found two baby chicken, like chicks being attacked by cats and they, they mm -hmm. They rescued them and put them in their bathroom, like not knowing what to do. Mm. So, so we discussed having chickens. We just didn't know it would happen so fast. So <laughs> I smuggled, I smuggled these, these chickens over the, the California border in a, in a wine box. <laughs> I was like, I was literally shitting myself. I was like driving because they have like a full border like inspection, you know, and the one thing is like livestock. Like, really? do you have livestock? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, guys, you need to make sure. Like, they just like, dee, 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 dee. Mm -hmm. and I'm just like, as the, I'm driving past, like the ladies just, and there's all holes in this box. And I'm just like, oh God, I hope that, that she doesn't like look at this box and be like, what's in the box. But they just wave, wave me through. But, um, so anyway, I ended up with two chicks. We didn't know what they were, but we ended up just really enjoying their personalities. You know, they are so empathetic. They are really, really smart. Like you call their names and they come to you. Um, th th there's just something really uh, sweet and special about it. And it, it 100% cemented my, I've been kind of on a teetering vegetarian thing for a while. Yeah. Um, and after, and after spending time with these, these birds, I was just like, there is no way 
and just knowing how America treats their poultry over mm. here, uh, I was just like, there's no way that I could ever eat a tortured chicken ever again. You know, it's like they have feelings. Like they, yeah, they, yeah. they come to me, they talk to me, they love me. They, you know, I have full blown conversations that I, I test out songs on them. They, you know, it's like, I know if it's bad when they're all like scurry up to the, the coop, they're like, shut up. Um, but, but it's uh yeah, it's really cool. We had, uh, anyway, that's another long story, but yeah. So we, um, we ended up getting, uh, f we have six now. So, wow. yeah. so that's cool. We built a chicken mansion. It's like Gym, yeah? it's better. It's better than than our house, really. <laughs> so they, it's it's a, they have like this elaborately engineered staircase because our our one chicken, uh, who who passed away, she was actually a meat chicken. We didn't know if that's what she was, but they've been genetically modified to go from from a baby to your table in 39 days that's what we, no we eat and so just watching watching that process of them of her grow and i love her i loved her i i love her and just watching her unable to be able to walk because her breasts are so big like genetically that's how they've they've been you know she couldn't carry her own weight and i was just like oh my god i'm never eating chicken ever again in my life what? so um so yeah, it's been it's been a fun lockdown, you know, lots of interesting things happening and and I don't ever play anymore. I don't ever I mean outside of plugging in my electric guitar mm. to track something for a song that I'm producing, I don't ever pick up my guitar to play. So now it's just like, eh. you know, I kind of have a little itch, you know, I have an extra 5 minutes. It's be, I mean, it's been a, a a busy time, but I have some some time. Let's let's throw some songs out and see what happens and it's had a good response so why the hell not it's it's silly and cute and weird and wonderful and that's what we're going for and that's what we need that's pretty much we do need that like that's a breakaway from the seriousness of life and bills and all of those things it's like really and it's pretty and it's a nice background as well it looks really cool with the chicken yeah it's our, our home is is beautiful um shasta and i have we bought this house like two years ago now this, this sorry, um, has been an amazing journey to watch actually i remember when you you first got it and you first started working on it and we'll hopefully be able to trace that journey like visually but that has been such a fascinating thing it's honestly been one of the most curious things it's weird for me because i've just <laughs> been so fascinated by this journey and it's yeah and that's one of the things i wanted to touch on is the fact that you bought this house um it was a fixer upper and you guys have pretty much been slaving away i mean you guys yeah, i mean it it really was it was literally a rat infested shithole you know and really? that's that's that, that's why we we were able to it was it was in the price range that that we were looking for and mm -hmm. and it's two and a half hours outside of um la i mean la is just completely unaffordable it's ridiculous you're paying like a million dollars for a box with no parking no it's just it's it's just ridiculous and you it, it just didn't make sense for us to do that so um yeah, I mean, labor is, is not cheap out here. You know, South Africa, Mexico, th third world countries, they have cost effective and probably not cost effective, it's just cheap labor, you know? Yeah. And so so for us to to hire anybody to help us, it's basically more than what, what I'm making a day. So we are just like, oh, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. But yeah. honestly, just honestly, it's uh it's been such an, a learning curve because it's something I, I will never ever do again um it, it really it broke my body physically mm. you know and i think there's a reason why construction workers you know you see them go home drink a bottle of vodka and pass out mm -hmm. you know it's uh it, it was the hardest thing physically that i've and probably mentally that i've ever done in my life because for for one month solid uh, we had one month to move into the house uh, with our, our lease had, had ended on our other place. Um, and so we, we literally had one month to, to make it habitable. Sure. Uh, and we were up every day at like 5am 
working like full 12 hours just in in the heat going right now it's 108 degrees out here and it's been i think it's been two it's been two two years yeah because all of these memories keep popping up on my instagram and facebook two years ago like you were jackhammering the tile out of the uh, you know out of the bathroom and um yeah i mean it it really has been incredible and and any homeowner knows that if you're doing it yourself it's just a continual process mm -hmm. you know i'm sure you know we've had we've hired handymen to um to help us with some like electrical and stuff like that but otherwise it's just been it's just been like two girls in home depot yeah, dude, <laughs> you know it's crazy I mean, it's crazy. literally, you made it your home. The States is your home. I mean, like, South Africa will always be home. I think that's one thing with South Africans is that when you speak to those who have left South Africa, there's, there's a thing. It's like South Africa is in your bones. My brother's in Ireland, and he always tells me, like, he loves Ireland. He loves how everything works, everything functions. But being South African, there's just something in your blood that just, it's not a nationality. And maybe every country says this, but there's a... I think what makes South Africa so special is that it's the friendliness of the people and kind of like, our oh, man. Of, you know what I mean? And totally. I, I miss it every single day without fail. And it's just something that I don't have really any South African friends close. Mm. Um, and it's just Americans don't understand, yeah. you know, it's, there's just, there's just a deep void for me that America doesn't give me that South Africa does, yeah. um, you know, and it's, it's really hard when speaking to Americans cause they're like, well, then why are you even here? <laughs> you know? And I'm just like, it's like, I'm here because of the opportunities and I love it. And I'm, I mean, I'm an American now. I have a dual citizenship. Oh. Um, thank you. Nice. Uh, but it's just, it's just, there's something very special. Like so it, my, my South African friends and it's, it just gives me a feeling that I, I don't get here. You know, it's like, and the little colloquial terms, you know, it's like, I can, I can drop these weird things and everyone's looking at me like, that's not funny at all. You know, <laughs> South African sense of humor is so different. And like nobody, nobody gets it. And I'm just like on this little weird island on my, by myself. Because <laughs> I remember like on one of Seether's shows that they did, the One Cold Night DVD that they shot. And they were chatting to the guy, the, the presenter. And he used, Sean Morgan used the word perv. Like, yeah, you're being a perv. Yeah. And he was, the presenter was so mind blown by this because he'd never heard it being used like that. And for us, like, you say, oh, stop being a perv. It's, it's a doing. It's like a verb. We use it as a yeah. verb as yeah. opposed to just yeah. being a perverted person. And yeah, we, we show it in everything. And, like, Americans just don't get it, you know? <laughs> like, hey, let's have some brekkie. Or, like, you're such a perv, man. And they just, like, uh, what? What? <laughs> it's just this disconnect. And, and I guess it... I mean, I just recently I've been having a deep yearning for, for coming back home for a visit. I'm just like, I want to see my besties. You know, I, I want to, I, I want to just do all the things that, that I grew up doing, relive those memories, you know, relive, just sit and, and have a, a couple of freaking black labels and just, yeah. you, you know, it's just, there's yeah. just something the that you can't that. explain to people. Yeah. Um, only a South African knows, for yeah. sure. And we have great beers. Our beers are next level. Dude. Black label oh, okay. is responsible for a lot of craziness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. And what, what, what kind of surprised you? When you moved to the States, what, what kind of things that really, like I was surprised by when you said taking chickens, poultry across uh, state lines, like I didn't realize that would be, a, that was a thing. I mean, here we just drive to another province and go through toll booths and that's about it. But yeah, taking right. food across state lines, I had no, I, well, I guess each state does have their own laws and stuff. So I'm assuming that's why it's such a, a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. But is that weird for you? Like, did it catch you off guard? And what else, like, kind of? I mean, there's a lot of things, I guess, that, that are fundamentally different. 
-hmm. You know, I think when you come to a, uh, a country like America, you know what I think surprised me the most is that I thought that South Africa was maybe a fairly racist country, but America beats South Africa hands down. Like these freaking Trump supporting rednecks are like the most insane. Like my mind is just blown. You would think that people like from third world, they aren't as educated. So maybe you, we can give that excuse, you know, for, for lack of education or lack of empathy. But I'm just like, gosh, darn it. Like America is meant to be like the greatest country in the world, the you know, but, and, and is it though? You know, I'm pretty sure that, uh, Propaganda. that I'm going to have a, a lot of, of my friends, Trump supporting friends, like very bummed out about this, this comment. But I, you know, I, I just think, there's such a lack of leadership mm. happening in, I think any intelligent person, any person that's a leader in business, like one of the things, it's like when you make mistakes, you take responsibility for it, for them, that you, there's accountability, you know, all of these things, it's just like some rich boy, which again is the big problem in the whole entire world is rich white men who have just gone and raped and pillaged and done whatever the fuck they wanted for the entire like thousand years or 400 years, whatever it is, you know? So I, I think it's just, it's just giving people and I think white men in general are starting to feel uh, very attacked, yeah. you know, it's, it's because he's just a lot, Trump's allowing people to behave badly. <laughs> it's just, it's such a weird time in the world, honestly, it's crazy. And, and what I'm very excited about is that this year is going to be the first time that I can vote as an American citizen. And Joe Biden 100% has my vote. I think Kamala Harris is absolutely incredible. Um, I think any, any time you have a woman in any kind of authority position, whether it be in music, uh, production, uh, whatever it is, guys are always going to be threatened and call her like a, a bitch or a hoe or a slut. And that, that's just, that's just what they do. It's a break you know? That's what it is. So it's just, you know, I, I think she's so eloquent and so smart and she's, you know, she, 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 she just, she speaks for me for sure. So I'm, I'm excited to see, hopefully, hopefully there can be some change happening. Yeah. I mean, I think, we're in that time if ever there was going to be a change in anything i think now's the time it's that it's going to be because the world has kind of become more conscious more aware of the surroundings and everything that's been happening for thousands and thousands of years but i think social media has really helped i mean social media has its we know social media has its own set of issues but where it's really become important is it's given that voice and kind of allowed people to create awareness about things that would, like you said, have been going on for thousands of years, but totally. don't have a voice. I mean, um, propaganda is such a big thing. You know, American media is such a massive thing and it, most of, of which controls the world, to be honest, in terms of yeah. from a, a media Absolutely. standpoint. And I think it's like, yeah, it's a really good time for change. And so it was so fascinating to me because um, I don't know the full story. I don't really, obviously, we'll never know all of it, but with Bernie Saunders, I'm not sure how you felt about with all Bernie. And I was watching, I was watching his podcast that he, he sat down with Joe Rogan as well, the Joe Rogan experience. And it was actually so interesting um, just to, to hear what he had to say. And some of the things he considered like a human rights were, were construed as him being an extremist. And it was yeah. just like such a fascinating to see, and he was talking about how when you're on TV for these debates and you've got 45 seconds to answer a question that's been plaguing the world for thousands of years and you can't get your message across. And I think like that podcast is so important because it kind of changed a lot of people's minds. And I think he even did an interview with Edward Snowden, uh, which was probably like incredible. Like it was, it blew my mind. I mean, it was um, like surveillance and CIA and, FBI and all sorts of intelligence wow. is is like my thing. Like it's a rabbit hole for me. 
And he, I think it was almost three hours of chatting to Edward Snowden. And he was also talking about how it was such a nice thing to see people like Bernie Saunders actually have more than 45 seconds to discuss um, what he is saying and why it's not being extreme. It's literally for what he believes is basic human rights. So I don't want to go too deep into the political agenda, yeah. but <laughs> I'm really fascinated by American history. So I think like I generally spend a lot of time on this. So it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting time. And I think it's really cool that you're getting to vote. That's very cool. I know. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. And I, I did like uh, Bernie, by the way. Yeah. But he's cool. He's I just, a- I just think I, I wish, I wish that, that we could have a younger set of, of people coming through. You know, yes. I think the problem lies in the, the problem therein lies with like older white men <laughs> you know i think it would i think it would be great if we could get like a freaking like 40 year old 35 37 i think you have to be 37 or something like that too but like a, a black woman a person of color like coming from a, i just i just truly believe that that women are better leaders i really do uh, and i think i i think it's time for people to allow women too and and women are the biggest haters of women it's crazy it's like it'll be it'll be a a woman will be like oh fuck that she's a terrible leader before a guy will be you know so it's just it's like man no winning this side huh (laughs) a lot of work yeah i think lots of work needs to be done and i think it's time for for what was always considered people saying women are too emotional that sort of stuff needs to stop being seen as a weakness and a strength because that's what you need. I mean, we're surrounded by a world of leaders and people that are just so emotionally detached. And it's why we have people like the Epsteins of the world being able to get away with what they get away with because they're so emotionally detached. Maybe we need a bit of emotion. We need a bit of empathy. We need a bit more of that kind of the female touch without sounding... I think New Zealand is a great example of that. Like, what a freaking legend is she? I'm just like, God damn. Yeah. Like, that's that's a true sign. And I think it's recently as well, I think it was Iceland or one of the Nordic countries where I think they... Yes, they have a female president too. President and most of the people on in parliament and government are females. They, It's like they've... The, there's no wage gap between males and females is like equality in the pay scale. So I think, I mean, the Nordics are generally like in a league of their own with a lot of things. Right. With like, yeah. I've, I've definitely had a, I've always been a huge male supporter my entire life. I've just been in the boys club my whole life, you know, so, which has been really cool. I've, uh, I haven't felt uh, that much, probably, not not in the band or growing up in South Africa, I didn't really feel um, that there was much inequality in that. But mm-hmm. I've definitely had a shift in uh, supporting women more in every angle of my life. Mm-hmm. I just think it's like the same thing as is uh, of like the Black Lives Matter thing. You know, it's like if I can work with a black female, like I would much rather open that opportunity. Um, I just think it's important for us all to just start making little changes and, and definitely have been a huge conscious effort and change for me is to start going like, like, no, we like, I need to stop making excuses that, that I'm not good enough, that no men run the world that no, Mm. like that, that is a terrible way of thinking. Um, and yeah, so it's been it's been a good changing time. This is this has been a, a new new change in, for me for sure as well. Where I'm just like, like no, I'm I want to support the female leader yeah. or the, the female direction. And even so, if it doesn't go perfectly, it's not going to. I mean, people have been trying to perfect so many things for thousands of years. So, totally. it's like the point is equal opportunity. It's never about women. And I had this argument with someone recently on a Facebook post where. They were like, women are trying to be like men. They're trying to do everything men. And it's not the case. It's, it's a <laughs> cool opportunity to prove yeah. that you can be just as good as something. Yeah. Um, hey, listen, the only thing, I think the only thing that men possibly 
are more capable of is strength, you know, and, and that's it. Like that, that's about it. Otherwise it's, it's game on for fair game for every single thing. (laughs) No, it's it's great. And I I hope that uh, we see something, something really big, some big changes, some positive changes for you guys. Um, Just for the country, because I think a lot of the world takes its lead from America. It's, it's a trend. So, Hopefully we can see. How's, positive how's positive. it happening in good old South Africa? How things? How things that side? <laughs> interesting time. It is all you know. South Africa. It's literally. It's so. There's so much character. It is a very interesting time. Uh, Women's Month has been a very big topic uh, of conversation. Obviously, you know, like the G, GBV stuff that's been going on. But yeah, I mean, you know, South Africa. It's always like it's always a treat in some sense. We have that sense of humor. <laughs> literally the worst situation and we turn it into something we can all laugh laugh about you know totally. and i think that's what's uh gotten a lot of the country through things is the fact that we can laugh at a lot of things but mm-hmm. in that there's obviously like like the global thing of corruption i think there's been a lot of talk about funds being misused um funds that were designated for uh covert relief funds and stuff you know, stuff has gone missing. So it's 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 been a bit tense in that sense. But like going the, to the president's uh, pool. Yeah, <laughs> we, who knows <laughs> at this time? Oh, shit. Um, it's windy right now in South Africa. As you wow, can see, jeez. <laughs> but generally, I think, like I said, the mood has been lighter since the the alcohol and cigarette ban has been lifted. I mean, yeah. the, I mean, cigarettes were banned since lockdown started which was around march so i guess the illicit traders benefited from everything but uh generally, crazy yeah, so i think it's it's a matter of rebuilding now and uh that's wow. that's what we're doing and hopefully we can get there and it's it's always an interesting time in south africa i think like yeah um there's a lot of good with the amount of stuff that we deal with but when you when you talk about things like properties in California that are, that's more for the size of a million. And then we get to live in these spaces and you realize just how affordable property is and having space. And it's like those little things that we, you don't really realize until you've traveled. Um, Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know what? We're actually quite lucky. I mean, yeah, it would be nice not to stress about whether your electricity is going to go off or not. And whether. Right. Oh my (laughs) gosh. You know, those those basic things. But in general, I think there's always some sort of optimistic approach from South Africans towards South Africa. I think totally. Everyone can always agree that it can only get better compared mm-hmm. to how things were back in the day. And that's like, that's just like another whole interesting space and time in our history that we can talk about. And I think, mm-hmm. but I, it's, it's, we're a characteristic country, a country of character and personality. And I think, that's what I love, and if I ever leave South Africa, um, which is well, a bit... I miss it, and I miss you guys. Yeah, <laughs> we miss you, and that's I think like from my side, it's just been such an honor and such a pleasure, like catching up and just watching your journey. I think that's what I love watching people's journeys, and when you realize, when you trace back and realize, shit, it's been twelve, thirteen years since I started following your journey. And you think that's a long time, you know what I mean? It's 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 not a short, it's not a year or two. It's like there's a whole history. I mean, totally. We've shared whether it's been personally, but we've watched each other grow in in different areas, even if it's through totally. social media. And that's just it's such a beautiful thing to see. I mean, um, and that's what's what I wanted to you know achieve with these with these sessions and with all of your podcasts is that. What can we learn from each other? What can we educate each other on? And, but also just have that real conversation, you know, like let's talk about the real things and the fun stuff is always going to be there, but let's also like try and help each other out in a sense. So it's been been really, really special. And I know you've got some, you've got quite a few projects coming up. I don't know if you want to maybe just let us know about uh, some of those projects and where we can kind of catch you and stuff. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know it's probably a busy day ahead, so we can always catch up again, do a part two, you know? Maybe sure. That'll be a cool um, 
we uh, obviously the Alien Ant Farm EP will be coming out sometime end of this year or beginning of um, 20, 2021. Uh, that was that was really awesome to work on. Um, been a huge fan of the band since Stealing Love Love Jones days. I remember I remember touring in Cape Town. I think we were on Long Street. And I can't remember what the bar was, but it's an upstairs bar on Long Street oh, no. that has pool tables in it. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't remember where it was, but but we were playing the Steen Love Jones boys and I were playing uh playing pool and and uh movies was on MTV and I was just like, Oh my god, this is the greatest song of all time, you know. So it's been it's been wonderful to be able to to create and become friends with with musicians that I aspired to and uh obviously the gray days record which is out now yeah if you haven't uh if you haven't listened to it please grab it on itunes or st stream it on spotify deezer whatever your um poison of choice mm -hmm. uh let's see what else oh the enemy airwave uh record will be dropping on the 7th of september and that is the guitar player from Grey Days. Uh, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful EP. Super kind of smashing pumpkin zesky '90s alternative rock vibe. Really, really cool, but with like a big modern uh, polish on it. Um, and then obviously the pigs, pigs. stuff is pigs. coming out, which I'm really excited about. Uh, we did. I decided to launch the entire project with. A cover of Slipknot's Duality. Yes, um, I actually have old footage of the old SJ back in Stealing Love. I know, I know. I thought, I thought that's that's Duality. You know, things yeah. they're so different. I'm like a completely different person to what I was then. And um, Dean Roberts from uh, Leila Vegas in Durban, South Africa. He actually put the uh, he put the video together for us, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, the, and that that videos had uh, and the songs had really great response. I mean, there's probably been like a quarter negative and three quarters positive. You know, it's definitely a, a song that should probably never be covered, but like <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. So it's whether it's your cup of tea or not, go check it out. The video is out. We've had like ten thousand views in three days, which is which has been awesome. Um, and yeah, that that's pretty much. I'm working on a couple of other projects. Oh, the Crazy Town single will be dropping probably in the next. It'll probably drop before December. So Amazing. keep a keep a look out for that. I'll keep. To let you in on them the moment I can. Yeah, please. That'll be great. And then. Yeah, I mean, and then obviously we need to look out for more live from the coop sessions, you know, with the chickens. Oh yeah, subscribe! I'm actually shooting another one tonight, so Amazing. there'll be a new live from the coop tomorrow, your guys' evening. Um, I'll send you. I'll send you the link. So Amazing. it's uh, it's gonna be. It's just silly. I'm just having fun doing some little mashups and uh talking about my little chickens who who on the first se the first episode which i think is a really cool fact is that most people don't know but chickens are the closest living relative to the dinosaur the t-rex they're little baby raptors <laughs> it's so crazy though because when you actually get close to them it's almost like when it's like watching jurassic park yeah. They are they are identical. They have the same movement. They just don't have the the weird little arms. Yeah. But yeah. they have the same movements. They have the same creepy eyes. Yeah. It's like they have the same like nostrils. It's 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 bizarre. Weird. So weird. So I am a I am a dinosaur owner. <laughs> 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 Which is pretty rad. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. I pet dinosaurs. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's pretty much that's pretty much about it and um you can follow sj jones productions on facebook and um i drop a lot of stuff on production and like my techniques on vocal chains and 808s and stuff like that so uh you can you can follow on that if that that interests you 
and then and Jay joins. I, I appreciate Instagram. your time. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to chat with you. I know. Me too. Thank you so much. And like, yeah, congrats and keep inspiring us, man. I think I look forward to like chatting to you again and you know, deep diving into a few more things. Maybe we'll get into some deep cuts, some music deep cuts. That's you know, some suggestions totally. to check out. Um, but yeah, I just appreciate your time and we're always rooting for South Africans abroad. You know, South Africans will always show love to South Africans doing good things. And, uh, yeah, man, just know that we're really excited. I'm proud and I'm really keen to see what happens next. And yeah, thank you so much for the time. And we'll definitely look for the music. I mean, that's, that's a given. We'll, we'll try and do our part to show as much support as possible. And, Thank I you. Appreciate, appreciate being a part so of season one of the Coffee and Sock Sessions podcast with me. Hey, thanks for having me on Coffee and Sock Success. <laughs> <Shut> my bread. <laughs> Got my bread. It's so funny. I actually have. I can definitely hear that my my accent isn't as heavy because I just can't quite get like I was trying. I asked my mom for a milk tart recipe the other day and i was like can i get the milk death recipe and i just couldn't get it right i'm like oh no i'm losing all my afrikaans like twang you know <laughs> it'll come back it'll take but i'm pretty stoked because uh it's my mom's like 65th birthday she lives over here with me now oh, nice. uh, and and i'm making i'm actually making my own borovos no way. Yeah, so I, I purchased the Borovor spice from yeah. something at Hirsch, something Hirsch spices on African Hub over here. Uh -huh. um, and I basically, I bought like a sausage maker and, so, and the, the sausage, whatever it is, the sock things. Yeah, what are they called? Membrane. It's pretty gross, but I'm making, I'm making a, um, a Beyond Meat one and a meat uh -huh. one. Or, so there's going to be the vegan uh, version and a, a meat version. And the crazy thing is, I tried it out on this vegan meat that I eat. Yeah. It was like eat, biting into a burry roll, dude. I was just like, I haven't had a burry roll for like mm. 10 years. Mm. I was just the nostalgia. I was just sitting in bed because like, since, since, uh, since uh, COVID, it's yeah. like every meal that I can sit in bed and watch a show. I'm just like, ah, oh, okay, cool. It's half an hour back in the studio. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, and I was yeah. just like, I said to Shasta, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so nostalgic. It's like, I'm eating a bori roll in South Africa. It's so crazy. Oh, cool. So I'm excited to do that, to do that. And I'm making a bubu tea too. Oh, what a treat. Right, but I haven't had any of those things in like 10 years. I don't know why I haven't made them, but I just haven't. Yeah. Well, Time to change that, Mabru. Flip the script a little bit, bruh. <laughs> right? Right. That's well, I appreciate your time. I have another um I have another Zoom call happening in about 15 minutes. No, you do your thing. No, I was gonna wrap up. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I think I actually made a, a note here because you said like mental health and experiences that shaped you as a person. Mm. Um and I think that it's important to uh, to say this we spoke about having an attitude of gratitude a lot but I think it's really important to be involved in charities and things with people that are less fortunate than you are it just changes your perspective of what you have and yeah. being satisfied with what we we have I think because of social media and and the Kardashians and all this craziness of, of how, what the world is telling us we should be. Mm. We are so unsatisfied with ourselves and what we have. And I think when you take the moment to, I, I just started um, donating to go local in yeah. South Africa. Um, and, and just seeing the gratitude on those kids faces and the families over a bag of rice, you know, it's like, I know me in America, I've forgotten. I don't see this. It's not in my face every day the way it was in South Africa. So it's just having, having that mentality of being satisfied with what you have. Yes, of course, be ambitious, be driven, but, but, but don't let it completely overtake yourself that you're this miserable being because you don't have 
what the other person has, you know, for lack of better word, keeping up with the Joneses, like just find your sanctuary and be happy in that. And I think that that's really important, you know, and it's not going to fuck with your head either. So I appreciate you. Please give my love to your wife and, and tell Shana, I say, what's up little buddy. She's going to lose her mind when I tell her. She's doing really well. Yeah. She's got a really good South African skates company that she started for young girls. So I'll send you. Really? Yeah, she's. Oh, please, she please send one. me a link. Yeah, she was the one. She was on ENCA. She's been on. She's getting some great coverage about it. So they basically, yeah, I'll send you some stuff. It's some incredible stuff. Whoa, there. that's awesome. Yeah, I'll send that's it. That's freaking awesome. So I'll tell her as well. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. This has been awesome. I'm looking forward to doing it again soon. Yeah, me too. All the best and. Take care of yourself. See you soon. Bye, man. Bye. Later. Later.